Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I thought today, I'm in my basement, I've set up kind of a nice workspace down here. I've got my desk, my iMac, um, and it's about 81 degrees, but it's you know reasonably comfortable. And I thought I'd inaugurate this space with walking through a little tutorial, maybe more like a behind the scenes of how I go from a photo to a finished product, product and going through Lightroom, Photoshop, and Adobe AI. There's actually not a lot of editing that I need to do on these photos today, so it's a pretty quick uh, little behind the scenes, but I thought you might enjoy it. So the backstory is I have been waking up pretty early. Uh, I have a toddler, he's been waking up at like 4.30, 4.45 with the time change, and any parents out there with young kids, I'm sure you're going through the same thing. It's brutal. Daylight savings time is terrible on children. But anyway, I've been waking up at 4.30 in the morning, and that gives me a lot of time to get out and about and see the sunrise. I also find that just walking on mornings like that when I'm exhausted, like like today, frankly, um, getting outside and doing something physically active is just a nice way to reset and start the day and try to have a normal day. So anyway, on this occasion, earlier this week, I woke up at 4.30, was at Mount Auburn Cemetery, which is a cemetery near Harvard Square, near Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I was there for sunrise and I had the place basically all to myself and it was just awesome. Like I walked around with my telephoto, looking for birds, seeing what I could find, stretching my legs and watching the sun come up. It was a cool morning and the birds were really active. And I came across a red-tailed hawk and it turned out it was a juvenile red-tailed hawk, so probably about one year old. And it was bouncing from tree to tree, not really bouncing, but moving from tree to tree. And I got to kind of track it throughout the, the the cemetery, which was a really fun experience. Oh, and by the way, I should say, anyone who's not familiar with this location, it's a cemetery, yes, but most of the grave sites are from the 1800s. And so it's kind of like a park as well. So it really functions as both. And so a lot of people go there as a nice place to walk without cars. It's a great space. So definitely worth checking out if you're in the Boston area. So anyway, so I went around taking photos of this red-tailed hawk and I got a couple captures that I absolutely love. It's a concept I've been going for for a while. Fall foliage in the background, hawk in the foreground, sun coming up, lighting the background, and just making that fall foliage pop. Perfect framing for a fall photo. So here's the shot that I took that I thought we'd edit today. It's kind of a fun um, photo because he's got this very goofy face. And what was happening here is a, um, a wild turkey. So in, in Massachusetts, we have a lot of wild turkeys that are walking around. And um, it's pretty cool, actually. Anyway, so a wild turkey was walking around um, me and, and kind of going up a hill away from me. And, and he was actually looking at that wild turkey and, and probably a bit perplexed as to what, what was this animal. So anyway, so he's got this kind of kooky face, which I think is awesome and makes it a fun photo. So the first thing I would do is um, edit and crop this photo. So I go to crop and I'm going to edit with uh, crop it with a 4 by 5 vertical crop and that's because my intended medium here is Instagram and 4 by 5 is the best way to um, post a photo on Instagram. You take up the most amount of the space on the screen. So this is about right. You know, I'm going to move it a little bit so um, so he's centered and um, you know, not taking up the entire frame, but but looking pretty good. I might bring it down just a little bit like that. Bring it in a little bit tighter, but you know, enough to get the fall foliage in the background and the hawk in the foreground. And one thing you'll notice is I've got this this twig, this stick here that's that's kind of in my frame. And rather than edit that out in a crop, what I'm going to do is edit that in in Photoshop. And that'll be the next phase of of stuff that we'll do. So. Okay, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the color a little bit globally. So I'm going to switch it to landscape, which just pops a little bit more. Bring up the vibrance a little bit here. Um, I don't want to overdo it, but but frankly, I like that. It's got a bluish cast, obviously. What, what's happening here is the shadows um, where the sun had not been up yet it are, uh, are lighting this with kind of a bluish shadow as opposed to the back. Now, I could do a two-tone color edit here um, with color grading. So the shadows, we can bring the shadows up a little bit here. So you can see the shadows are, that's not, that's kind of more like what we're looking for, sort of an orangey shadow. But 
I'm not crazy about that um, because I think it's now giving it a purple issue and it's just kind of cumbersome. So what I'm going to do is rather than that, I'm just going to drop the saturation of blue in this image. We don't really need blue um, in this in this shot. I'm also going to drop the luminance a little bit. Um, so that's I think pretty good. Now he doesn't look great, and so I think he needs to be a little bit brighter. Uh, we probably need a little bit of a yellowy cast to it um, to compensate for the blue and, and the color we just removed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask, and this is the new masking function in Lightroom. So if you click mask, you can select subject, and it does a remarkable job at capturing the subject. So let's see what we end up with. You can see what's been highlighted here. Now it's got the, it's got the hawk perfectly, I mean just perfectly. And then it's also picked up on a little bit of on the foreground as well with the stick that the hawk is sitting on. But I don't mind that actually because I think that that's sort of appropriate to edit with the hawk um, for a continuity of, of space and depth of field that makes sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of color back into um, the hawk. Uh, he's not... Yeah, there we go. It's just lagging a little bit for me. So... Uh, I'm going to brighten him up a little bit, uh, maybe like a compensation of exposure like that. I don't want the highlights to be too blown out like right here, so I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit. Maybe drop the, the clarity just a little bit and increase the saturation, uh, the sharpness of the image um, just to make sure that he pops really well with the background. Um, I also think we need a little bit of contrast edit here. Still lacking in color, so I'm just gonna boost that a lot, I guess, and compensate. Yeah, so that's starting to look a little bit more. If we look at the before and after, you can see that's what it looked like, unedited, and, and here's where we are now. That's a little bit more authentic in terms of the coloring of, of the bird. It's still a little dark to me, so I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit more um, with whites and with exposure. Be something like that. All right, good. So one thing with this image in general, so I'm now out of the mask. I think it's just looking a little cool. So I'm going to warm up the entire image. Uh, we're looking at here something around 4,700 Kelvin. And that's looking a lot more um, ballistic in comparison to what it was originally. Okay, now one other feature I'm, I'm really into with, with the masking feature here is the ability to do an inverted mask. So here we've got the subject selected, but I'm going to select the subject again. It's going to, should do exactly the same thing as it did the first time. But now I'm going to invert that mask, and what that's going to do is just select the background. So you can see the entire background is now selected. We have selected this foreground, so I'm actually going to subtract with a brush this part of the log that is um, has been picked up because for this particular, uh, what I'm going to do is darken the background a little bit and reduce the clarity to give it a little bit more blur. This is a feature I've been really into lately. Um, but in order to do that, I need to deselect. It looks like I, I'm... I'm pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and select that mask again. So this is the foreground and now we have the background. So then um, what I'm going to do is drop the clarity. And I think this is a pretty neat effect because it's going to blur that background a little bit. And I'm also going to make it a little bit darker just to add a little bit more contrast um, with the hawk. So we're starting to look Pretty different, starting to glow a little bit. It's looking good. I think we can probably brighten it up even more uh, in terms of color, warm it up a little bit more. So I'm going to go push it all the way up to 55 Kelvin. And now I'm going to go ahead and come into that mask and drop that a little bit cooler because we've now kind of overdone it with with contrast in the background um, with the with the global edits that I've implemented. So that is, that's starting to look a little bit better. Now I'm going to still continue to edit that a little bit just to make it pop a little bit more. Dropping those blacks. 
working on those highlights. It's a little blown out here, which I don't love. But I think that that looks pretty faithful to the scene that I saw in real life. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna leave that there. We've now edited this in Lightroom. Pretty happy with the result. It looks it looks pretty good. But clearly there's this, this twig here. And so the next phase is to edit that out. And so to do that, um, it's actually extremely easy to do with content aware in fill in, um, in Photoshop. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on here and open this photo up in Photoshop. And what this is gonna do is create a TIFF, a, um, a lossless um, version of this photo. And it's gonna open that up into Photoshop. I'm gonna edit it in Photoshop. I'm gonna save it. And it's gonna automatically save and open that photo up, that new copy of it that's been edited in Photoshop. It's gonna open that back up into Lightroom. So that's the integration with Lightroom and Photoshop that's pretty nice that you have uh, because they're both Adobe products. All right, so Photoshop has opened this photo. Uh, we have it here. This is exactly what we just edited in Lightroom. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a duplicate of this layer. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer. I'm gonna call it just background copy. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in on <laughs> the, um, the twig because I wanna make sure that I am able to see it. All right, good. All right, so here's what we're gonna be capturing with the lasso. So I'm gonna go over here to lasso tool I'm gonna just do a rough selection of the twig. Okay, we've got the selection. Probably do a little bit more. So if you push the option command, you can subtract. So I'm just gonna subtract just to try to get as, as accurate as possible. Um, just because the less you subtract, the less you select, the less it will fill. Okay, so we've got that selected. Now we're gonna go over here to edit. We're gonna go to fill and then leave it on content aware fill, color adaptation, and everything stays the same. And what this is gonna do is this is going to select pixels that are right next to the pixel that's in this. It's gonna go through that for all the pixels and it's going to replace them with nearby pixels. And to do what it's doing is it's filling in this section here with information from here. So we're gonna click less, okay. It does its magic. Can you see where it filled? Because I can't. Isn't that amazing? It's pretty incredible, right? I mean, you can kind of see the outline here when you're zoomed in all the way, but certainly when you zoom to fit screen, I mean, nobody, nobody's gonna know, right? That there was a twig here. And that's pretty neat. So that's all we're doing in Photoshop. So I'm gonna save this. Oh, I'm gonna save this here. I'm gonna close. And look what we got. Now we have the photo in Lightroom that has been edited to remove that aberration of the stick that I wasn't able to get when I was when I was photographing originally. Now, one other thing that I'm not crazy about with this is there's clearly a lot of noise, and that's because I shot this photo at ISO 3200, which is incredible because it was daylight and the sun was coming up and I still needed ISO 3200, which is nuts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Topaz AI. And so to do that, we're going to again edit this photo. Now we're editing the version that came out of Photoshop. And I'm going to edit in Topaz AI, Denoise AI. So here we go. Here's the photo. It defaults to um, auto settings. So I'm just going to use the auto settings for now. Let's see what it does. I think that looks great. It's doing a really good job adding a lot of blur with that noise reduction. It's it's getting rid of noise here. It's kind of an interesting, I mean, there are some issues there. Uh, so I think what I might do is use the mask feature here. And this is a kind of extra step, which is a little bit annoying. 
um, to be honest, but I'm not going to make you sit here and do it with me. But what I do is I select the, um, the hawk in this case using um, the masking tool within Topaz AI. All right, so what I've done is I've masked the, um, the hawk and I've inverted that mask. It does a pretty good job of, of sensing kind of the boundaries of the hawk. And I've only applied noise reduction to the background. So you can see it's a nice blur. We've gotten rid of a lot of noise there. I think that looks really good. All right, so I'm going to apply that mask. I'm going to apply the noise reduction. It's going to process that. And I'll put a photo back into Lightroom, and that will be our finished product. All right, and there you have it. So we went from this photo here, which was our original photo, to this edited photo right here. It's brighter, we've dealt with the noise, it looks pretty nice and sharp here. I mean, he looks great, we got the nice blurry background. One thing we could do here at this level is just add a little bit of noise reduction in, which is gonna be reducing noise further on here, but it's just gonna deal with a little bit of the residual noise on the red-tailed hawk. But I am, um, I'm quite happy with this. I think it's a that's a nice photo, nice and sharp, looks really good. And that's that's what I would export. I'm gonna export that right now and share that photo. All right, well, that's what I've got for you this week. That's the process going from taking that photo, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Topaz AI to remove the noise. I don't typically use um, Photoshop to remove twigs and things like that, but you know, in this particular photo, I couldn't avoid it in the, in the situation in situ. And so I had to take that photo with the twig in it and remove it in post. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. It helps. Um, I, I actually really enjoy making these types of things. So hopefully you enjoy watching them as well. And with that, even though today's episode was mainly spent sitting inside in my basement in 82 degree temperatures. I hope you get outside. I hope you enjoy wildlife and nature. Take some bird photos, edit them, um, and tell me how it goes. Anyway, be well, take care, and get outside.